And we're live. Good. Okay. Ugh. Take my. All right. So as usual, let's let a couple people get in here. Um, this is this is way too low. Okay. Let's adjust this shit right now. That's better. A little lower. There's one person. All right. Let's see. B B B N N N L L L. I never really know exactly how I'm supposed to say that name, so <laughs> I think I said too many N's or L's or something there. What's going on? So, seven people. Eight. Jeez. All right. They're, they're lining up. So, for those of you, D.E. Francis, Francis Gramp. Love it. True artist. Damn. All right. I think people are getting used to... Uh, me live streaming now so it's kind of cool that people jump in here so fast i tried to let you guys know on instagram that i was going live tonight um i if, if for some reason i know i never do this but if for some reason you know follow me on instagram i do try to keep you guys up to date on there if i go live or not for the most part i'm trying to stay good on that i know i should probably be a little more professional so this is my attempt at that anyway so for those of you that don't know, Dollar Tree has become kind of a hot spot for movie pickups. So you have um, DVDs, Blu-rays, and um, even, even freaking like video games every once in a great while. Now that's rare, but they get some pretty good shit. They get a lot of garbage, as one would expect. But man, in all the time now, now... Dollar Tree gets in a shipment like once every month or so. And I actually have a buddy who gets a heads up on that like in advance. So he like knows when they're coming. Cause there's like a good amount of people at this point who know of the Dollar Tree thing and are like Dollar Tree hunters. So you have to get there. Like you'll run into a few people who like are in on it now and, and they'll be like rifling through. Um, and some, unfortunately, you know, there, there's plenty of titles where they only get like one copy in each store or less, sometimes none at all. So when I lived in Phoenix, I would drive, Riley, there she is. All right. So Riley wanted the shout out. I actually spent uh, my entire day with Riley and my daughters and, uh, and Zach, a friend of hers. So there she is. Um, Riley is a new friend of mine. I cut her hair. Uh, a couple weeks ago and we've been just like chatting it up like crazy hanging out as much as we can don't get jealous ladies she's as queer as a three dollar bill so but she's amazing and i absolutely adore her and she's been so great to me and my kids so i'm kissing riley's ass right now so i love you riley thanks for coming by um anyway so um and hi to Zach and, and Madison, if they're with her. But anyway, so with the Dollar Tree stuff, you know, in the times that I've went in there, you found a movie called Gooby at a Dollar Tree. It's a Canadian movie, some weird looking bear, human, giant hybrid. Uh, I'll have to look for Gooby, huh? Um, yeah, I've never heard about that one. Um, but in the time that I've been shopping at Dollar Tree, man, I've gotten some really good shit. But I'll tell you, I got some finds today that absolutely blew my mind. I could not believe they were there. I was like, are you serious? For $1, you have this for a dollar. Could not believe it. So anyways, as I'm sure you guys want to know, I mean, we're, we're, that's what we're here for. I'll kind of save the best for last. Now, I had to, I had to, I had to control myself today. Hey, horror nerd. Um, because, okay, at first I went a little hog wild, right? And I probably had a stack of like 50 movies. They had a lot, a lot of Wild Eye releases. That's what I saw the most of. Wild Eye sold them like everything. So like, if you're looking for anything from Wild Eye, I'd check Dollar Tree right now. Now, a lot of their stuff is not that good. <laughs> let's, let's just be honest. But they had a lot of Wild Eye stuff. And I was like, oh shit, hey, die. Uh, uh, dit dots. Dit dots. Um, so 
Uh, but Magnet, they usually get like a ton of Magnet. Magnet always sells their stuff to them. Uh, good evening, Ninja Bear. Um, so you'll see a lot of Magnet releases. You'll see a lot of, of um, like, who's another company I see there a lot? Um, Magnet has a lot of really good releases. Like today, like I saw a lot of movies I already own. Like Murder Party was there, and but okay. Anyway, I got to like a t I got a stack of like fifty, and I was like, you know what, man, I'm not buying all of these. Can I afford it? Sure, of course. It's fucking a dollar a piece. I could buy a hundred of them and not even blink. But I didn't want to spend it on shit, so I really went back through. Oh, good, you like the Lodge more. Good, I love the Lodge. Um, I went back through and I looked through every single one of them and it was like, nope, knocked it out. They had Lake, Lake Dead one and three. They had like, they had like the Man Eater series. They had some of those, you know, those sci-fi originals. Um, they've got, Wild Eye does have some good movies. Um, shout out to my buddy, Mikey McMurrin, who directed Secret Santa. Um, his movie was released on Wild Eye. And I think that movie's phenomenal. And he made it for $6,000. Good job, Mikey. Um, but yeah, man, I, when I went back through, I, was just, I, I probably eliminated 25, 30 titles. And they were all titles that they looked like they had okay covers. And I was like, yeah, for a dollar. And then I was like, well, do I want to buy this, these 30 movies that probably all suck? Or do I want to take that 30 bucks and put it towards like a really rad Blu-ray that I'm not, you know, maybe like a... Cronenberg film that I don't own on Blu-ray because I want to go and buy all the Cronenberg uh, um, Criterion Collection Blu-rays. I don't own any of them right now. And I was like, oh man, I should go do that. So I put a bunch of shit back that I didn't need, but it was tempting. It was very tempting. I have a buddy, Alex, who runs the Beyond the, uh, Beyond the Void Horror podcast, and that dude buys everything. And he buys like doubles too because he'll like give them away on his channel. But I'm a frugal you know, cheap piece of shit who isn't sending you guys nothing. Um, I actually did pick up one title and I was like, I swear I own this. This is one of the greatest movies ever. And then I went through, cause I have an iCollect app on my phone and I haven't cataloged everything yet. So it might be there. I'll be shocked if I don't own this movie. Here's the story though. Here's a funny story really quick before we get into this. Um, let me grab the movie so I can just get this one out of the way. One of the, literally one of the greatest movies of all time. I'm not exaggerating on that at all. Uh, and that is, I Saw the Devil. If you haven't seen I Saw the Devil, I don't know what to tell you. Like, get on it as quick as possible. I legit would put this in some of the best movies of all time. Anyway, so I, I was in there, um... And <laughs> it was, it, it was in there and I was like, I was like, I swear I own this. I have to own this. This is one of my favorite movies. How do I not, how do I not own this? And then I went, look, and I was like, and then this guy came up and he was looking through the movies and he was trying this and that. And he was a younger guy. And I was like, I was like, Hey man, I was like, I was like, if you want a great movie, I'm like, check this out. I'm like, we'll buy this. Cause at that point I was like convinced I had it for sure. I had to have it. Right. So like I, th I threw it over to him and I was like, yeah, check this out. The guy looks at it and he's like, oh yeah, okay. And he like popped it down and I thought he like, he put it into his pile and then he just kind of like sloughed it away and then just walked away. And I, like he grabbed a couple other really shitty movies and walked away. And I was like, <laughs> he didn't like say thank you. He didn't even look at me. He was just like, he's like this piece of shit. He's like, Pfft. I was like, whoa, okay, sorry. What a dick, man. I, I, I was like, all right, fucking prick. Um, I, if I wasn't with my kids, 100%, I would have said something. I would have been like, oh, <laughs> sorry, cool guy. I didn't fucking know that you were so cool. You can't take some random recommendation on a dollar purchase, you fucking cheap prick. Anyway, all right, so let's get into them. So... First up, now these are the, now, a lot of these I don't know anything about, of course. Um, some of them I've seen before, some of them I want to give a, want to give a, like, a rewatch to, and then there's some that I was just like, you know what, 
this looks decent enough. Um, let's start um, with with uh, these two really quick. Where'd they go? Where'd they go? I forgot these were in here. Uh, we got help. I shrunk the te I shrunk my teacher and Tiny Christmas. There you go. Those are the movies that my kids picked out. So shout out to my kids. I forgot that these were in here. So there you go. Anyway. Um, okay. So first up, this is a movie that I did not finish, but Quentin Tarantino loved this movie. So when I saw that, I'd already done it after I watched it. And I was like, oh, I need to go back and finish this thing because I was not super into it. This is a magnet release, and that is Big Bad Wolves. Um, people love this fucking movie. So I do need to go and check this out again because um, <laughs> the shrunken people genre is underrated. You know, it's funny is they, they picked up another movie. It was like shrunken kids or something. Um, I only like to watch porno with shrunken dicks. Um, all right. So Big Bad Wolves. Anybody? Anybody seen this? Um, me so hungry. Nice to meet you. Me so horny. So there you go. Um, next up is a movie that I, you didn't like Big Bad Wolves. I wasn't into it either, but Quentin Tarantino right on the front cover of the motherfucking movie. Best film of the year. I mean, I don't know. I, I was like, I watched like half of it and I was like, Quentin, really? Okay. Really? This one? All right, next up is a movie I, I watched, and I want to rewatch it um, and do a Monster Monday, and that is Storage 24, which is, which is a, a monster movie that takes place in a, like a, like a storage unit complex. Um, I remember thinking it was all right. Um, I liked it. So I'm looking forward. It was on Blu-ray, which is really cool that they get Blu-rays in here. Um, and Quentin hated True Detective season one. Wow. That's fucking crazy. Um, yeah, that, that is pretty wild. He did? Really? Damn. That's, that's crazy. Uh, you picked up Texas Chainsaw Master 3D and regretted it? Come on, cuz. Do your thing, cuz. Come on, you don't love that movie? Me neither. All right, another one that I picked up, and this is another magnet release, this is a Blu-ray as well, is a Thailand action drama thriller something called The Gangster. I love these Asian drama action films. Um, I can watch this kind of shit all day. So I'm looking forward to checking this out. I never even heard of it, but for some reason, I had a good feeling about it. So I said, screw it, I'm picking it up. Anybody ever seen that one? All right, next up, we have got a movie. Now, recently I was hanging out with this chick who's really into like shitty shark movies. And I, <laughs> I've seen this, I've not seen this movie, but I've seen this movie a few times like out and about. And I was like, oh, I bet it's kind of fun. So shark movies are, Shark movies are rough, for sure, outside of most. No, I just watched Shark Lake. It was terrible. Um, but this is another, this is E1. This is Trailer Park Shark. Uh, you've got good old Dennis Haskins in this from Saved by the Bell. you got Tara Reid, which I'm not really looking forward to. And the reunion of her and Thomas Ian Nichols from also American Pie for, uh, sh um, fame. So, yeah. They're going to need a bigger trailer. I'm going to need a bigger dumpster to throw this in, I have no doubt. But you know what? Uh, I picked this up just in case, you know, me and uh, that chick hang out again. And she, and I'm going to throw her even a shittier movie on the screen. So you love 47 meters down? I do too. I, I really like 47 meters down. All right, next up, I, do, I did see this movie. I thought it was pretty cool. This is definitely a, a pretty unique interesting film um definitely a much different take it's like the lighthouse but an actioneer version of it with monsters thrown in and that is ray stevenson's cold skin Did you guys check out cold skin i watched it last year 
It's an interesting movie. It's an interesting movie. I liked it. And I would definitely be looking forward to doing a Monster Monday on it eventually. So I picked it up for that. I thought it was pretty cool. So all for a dollar, guys. All for a dollar. These are crazy. All right. Now this one, I was, I really wanted to pick this up for a very specific reason. Now, this movie was released by Wild Eye and it is called Scrawl. Now, I, it says on the front, the comic book that kills. Um, I don't know much about the movie. Obviously, it has something where somebody draws on a comic book and they come to life. But something like that, I would assume. But it stars Daisy Ridley from The Force Awakens, you know, Rey, our main character of the new Star Wars movies. This was like one of her first movies. And when I saw she was in it, when I was looking up her career, you know, when she finally, when she came uh, onto the scene as Ray, and I fell in love with her and I was just like, oh, this cool, this chick's so cool. I'm like, I wonder what she's done before. And uh, I saw this in there and I was like, oh, how do I find this? And I think at that time you couldn't maybe. And because now she's, you know, so pop, you know, she's so famous and she's in one of the biggest franchises of all time. They even put right here, Daisy Ridley from The Last Jedi. So that's funny. I mean, this is obviously a very new copy here. But, um, I mean, that's uh, Daisy Ridley in there. So I, I always wanted to see this because of her. Um, so here we go. I was shocked to see it in the pin. I pulled this out so fast. I was like, oh, my God, the Daisy Ridley horror movie. Holy shit, I've been looking for this thing. So kick ass that that was in there. All right. Next up, I had to get this one. This is another magnet release. And, I mean, how am I not going to buy a movie that has Asha Argento holding a pistol in lingerie, starring, co-starring also Michael Madsen? This movie is called Boarding Gate. Yeah, Asha Argento in a skimpy outfit holding a gun with Michael Madsen, and it's a magnet release, and they, a lot of the times, put out some pretty quality stuff. So when I saw this one, I was like, I got to pick this shit up. Um, have you, you've seen it? Not good? I don't care, man. I mean, look at this. Every scene, they're trying to sell me the movie. There's no doubt about it. And I, I bought into it for a whole dollar. I'd buy that for a dollar. Yeah, that's, that should be, that should be my like screensaver on this. For any Dollar Tree stuff I do, I should have the RoboCop guy. Um, yeah, I mean, this, this cover is worth a buck. You're right. Um, she is hot as hell. I agree. I agree. She's so hot. Her father can't help but film her ass naked. That's how hot she is. Okay. Let's just say that. All right. Next up, this is a drama. So this is going to not really fit into our theme here, but it's a Blu-ray and it stars Cameron Monaghan, who are Cameron Mon Monaghan, however you say his name, who I think is fantastic. I think he is the most underappreciated joker. He might be my favorite Joker. He might be my favorite Joker. No joke. <laughs> but seriously, I think Cameron Monaghan's Joker is phenomenal. So uh, anyway, the movie is called Anthem of a Teenage Prophet. And it not only stars Cameron Monaghan, but it also has Peyton List in it, who's adorable. And it also stars Juliette Lewis. So I, I just think that, you know, and yeah, I see somebody saying Jerome. Dude, he's the fucking Joker in that show. <laughs> Let's just be serious. And then his brother, right? Like he makes him the Joker. So he plays two different Jokers in that show. Two completely different Jokers in that show. And I think both are phenomenal. He does not get enough credit for his performances. I think he's seriously fantastic. So anyways, moving on. Um, what's up next? What's up next? All right. Next up, talking about beautiful women, as I was with the Peyton List girl. Um, now, this is a movie I bought purely off of uh, who I consider to be the most beautiful woman that's ever lived. Yes, yes, the hyper bull is here, boys. That is Marissa Tomei. Marissa Tomei, to me, is the top tier, like, most beautiful woman that's ever lived. If you ever want to see the most beautiful woman, to me, you watch My Cousin Vinny. 
and you will see the most beautiful woman. And just throughout her whole career, just throughout her entire career, to this day, I would, I would still date her 100%, 100%. She's like 54 or 50 something. I don't give a shit. I date her right now. So call me up, Marissa. You want to date a 38 year old man who makes videos in his father's salon? I'm right here, baby. You've been waiting. Anyways, this movie is called Dark Was the Night, and it has not only Marissa Tomei, but Timothy Oliphant, who I love. And Timothy Oliphant, actually, I know a lot of people are like, oh, Deadwood and all these different, he's even the freaking villain in uh, um, Live Free or Die Hard. But Timothy Oliphant for me, my favorite Timothy Oliphant uh, performance is actually in Santa Clarita Diet. I think he's so, so funny in that show. I really think his comedic timing in that show is, is top tier, top notch freaking comedy. He is so, so funny. He's so, I'm so used to him in like a Deadwood or something. He's where he's like super serious, but oh my God, the guy is so fucking funny in, in uh, Santa Clarita Diet. But it also has Charlie Plummer and it has uh, Muri um, Muriela Enos. I don't know how to say her name from The Killing. She's great. Um, so great cast, fucking great cast. Whoa, wait, what? Written and directed by Joshua Leonard? Is that, is that the Blair Witch Joshua Leonard? Did he write and directed this? Can you look that up? Can, you, can someone Google if this was written and directed by Josh from the Blair Witch? That's fucking crazy. Joshua Leonard. It's got to be him, right? Wow. I was not expecting that name. Anyway, so somebody... That is Josh. Wow, okay. Now I'm even more interested. Anybody seen this? I didn't look at the comments. Maybe people say it was good. Um, I don't. Oh, hey, Ashley. I didn't see you sneak in. Ben's in here. Got a bunch of cool people in here. 61 people. Hey, guys. Uh, all right, whatever. Anyways, um, there you go. Before the devil knows you're dead. I'm having a hard time recalling that movie right now. Wait, before the devil knows you're dead. I know that title, I'm just for some reason. Oh, Mike's here. You know what, Mike? I'll get you a high from Rebecca because that's who you really want to high from. You don't want to high from me. Um, anyway, all right, moving on. We got a slasher flick here. Um, I looked up the review, so I did do this. I was in there and I was like on IMDb and I was on a few different sites looking at these titles and reviews on them to see. Cause like, I don't trust IMDb for fucking nothing, nothing. But I, I will, okay, I've said this in the past. IMDb is good for something. IMDb is good for like, there's certain levels where I will pay attention to IMDb and then anything past certain levels, I won't. So IMDb is good for like anything in the threes and below, you can pretty much count as trash. It's unbelievably rare that anything in the threes down is good. So if I, when I'm going through these movies that I was in, um, when I was in Dollar Tree and if I saw three something, immediately put it back. And I saw probably of the movies I had, I probably saw five or more twos. Twos. Do you know how fucking bad a movie has to be to get into the twos on IMDb? Twos. There was like a 2.6 or something. I was like, oh my God. Almost threw the thing across the store. I almost stomped on it so no one bought it. Like a two on IMDb? Are you fucking kidding me? Um, and then anything above a seven on IMDb is usually pretty good. I mean, and, and then from there, like seven down to three, it, you, it, it's all over the place. It could be a five and it could be a masterpiece. It could be a fucking, you know, a six point something and, and be total shit. So for me, anything below a seven all the way down to a three, I don't trust a fucking thing. But then seven and up, I'm like, okay, seven up, there you go. Um, there you go. You know what I'm getting at. And then, and then um, TV series kind of have a little different gauge. Anything below like a seven in TV is usually not good. Like especially like six and below, fucking forget it. 
like for television series for some reason like television series have to stay in that like seven and up range maybe even like high sixes but you get into like fives or low sixes I don't even bother with the show most of the time and anytime I do like two minutes in I'm like oh this is why this is why anyways this is a slasher film um, it had like a five, it, 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 or like a 4.8 or something. And then all the reviews were mostly pretty good. So I was like, oh, fuck it. And this is called Night Shift. Um, I know nothing about this one. Um, it takes place in a motel or a hotel, motel, hotel, holiday. Inn. Um, and she's hired to work the night shift. I mean, we've seen this a million times, but it's a slasher flick. So. Dracula 3D has a 3.6 on IMDb for a reason, okay? For a reason. American? I think so. Um, I mean, I don't know. Do, do people look like they speak English? <laughs> I don't fucking know. I don't, okay, usually you can tell by the names. Like, if you look at the names and shit's, like, unpronounceable, then you know you're watching some foreign flick. But Night Shift, anyone heard of this one? Anyone seen this one? On the IMDb, it had a different name. It had like Killer Night Shift. It still said Night Shift, but there was like a word above it that was like Killer, Murder. Like, I think it was Killer Night Shift. So um, I bought that and I didn't like it, so I took it back and said it broke. You took back, okay. You took back a movie to the Dollar Tree or you took back a movie to like Walmart? You took a movie back to Dollar Tree. You're like fucking... <laughs> you're cheaper than me you're cheaper than me nobody takes shit back to the dollar tree man you just throw it away i'm sure you don't mean the dollar tree anyway um all right next up i did buy this because i'm a series whore and anytime i can like collect a series um sea beast uh it's a man eater movie um i'm sure it's pure shit but there you go yeah, how do you say something broke? Did you like snap it in half and then say it broke? <laughs> that's fucked. Um, and it, I, this is garbage. There's no way. There's no way that's good. But I have a bunch of man eater ones. I'm going to put it with them. Fuck it. All right, it was a buck. Judge me. That's fine. Okay, next up, I got this one for. Um, I don't. I got this one for. Uh, Christian Slater. I don't remember if I've seen this or not. I'm pretty sure I have, and I'm pretty sure it's shit. In fact, no, I'm, maybe I'm thinking of Fear.com, and I'm mixing it up with Stephen Dorff. Hmm, but anyways, Playback. Um, has anybody seen that? I, I, I know a lot of people say this is a little bigger of a movie, but... Picture evil, it knows you're there. I, I, I can't remember if I've seen... I swear I have. I swear I have. So you saw, you said it was all right. Slater isn't in much. Dude, he just like got off of that overly, insanely successful uh, freaking Mr. Robot show, which I've still never seen. More like play crap. Wow, that's some fucking highbrow humor right there. I didn't know we had a comedian joining us tonight. That's like my buddy Daniel White. <laughs> my buddy, he fucking, any chance he gets, he always throws meh into any title he possibly can. It's, it's funny. It's funny. I will admit. No matter what. He, it doesn't matter if he loves the movie or doesn't. If he can fit a meh somehow into the title, he will do it. He will fucking do it. Anyways, all right, next up, we have got a movie that is called The Boat. The Boat. Um, it, this is one that had a terrible cover. Um, didn't look like it had much of a production quality to it. But when I went on IMDb, there were so many good reviews. And the, high, and the rating was actually kind of higher. And then this guy, Rob Hunter from... Film School Rejects, who I totally trust because he, you know, I, I know him personally. Just kidding. I don't know this guy at all. But he said ranks easily among the year's best horror films, best adventure films, and best film, period. I mean, this guy's got high praise for it. But I don't know. It seems like a 
claustrophobic, one location, um, you know, kind of plays with your mind. I'm not really sure what the fuck is it about. Oh, boat is pretty rad. Okay, Paul, you say boat's rad. Oh, the boat's good, Tony. The boat is great. Okay. Oh, cool. So I did pick well on this one. You have to admit, this, this is not doing for much for me. Like, like right now, I have like nothing tingling down there. When I look at this cover, like there's nothing going on down here. I am not aroused by this cover at all. Um, but I got sold by all the stuff I looked up on it. So I was like, fuck, all right, the boat. I missed out, I guess. The love boat. Okay, moving on. Um, next up is a movie I have seen, and I feel like a lot of people shit on this movie. And I actually quite enjoyed it. And I was kind of surprised when I got done with it because um, Triangle is a very good movie. I reviewed it a couple months ago, actually. Um, that was a fun one to, to go back and talk about because, man, it's like it's a total mindfuck of a movie. Um, anyway, but this was a movie I dug. I, I watched it specifically because Scout Taylor Compton in is, is in it, and I think she's hot. And uh, I enjoy watching her and stuff, and shout out to her, um, her leaked pornography, her, her porn video. She has a sex tape, guys. Just so you know, I can be the piece of shit that draws you towards that. It's probably something that she's like ashamed of and doesn't want anyone to watch. And here I am telling people to go check it out. But it's there and it's nice. And I'm uh, giving it a two, two thumbs up. Two, three thumbs up. <laughs> Anyways, Ghost House. Did anybody, did anybody see this and like it? Because I swear I feel like I'm alone on this one. I actually enjoy this. Do I think it's great? No. Did I dig it? Did I enjoy it? I did. I did. I thought this was fun. So I don't know why, man. It's got shit on, but I thought this was pretty cool. And you see your boobies in it too. So there you go. But that's probably what it was. It's probably because I saw her boobs. It was before I saw the porno. So like now I'd be so desensitized. I'd be like, girl, I saw like your freaking cervix. So now your, your nipples aren't going to do nothing for me. But at that time, I, I didn't, I didn't see it. Um, but yeah, I thought this was a good one. So there you go, uh, Ghost House. I reviewed it a while ago. She has resting witch face. Hmm, that's all right, I can knock that face right off of her. Uh, not like with my fist, by the way. Now this is one that I've seen the cover for a bunch and it looks like shit. But the reviews on it were actually mostly like Hidden Gem, this and that. It's probably their friends um, doing it. But this is another Wild Eye release. And from what I can tell, it's like maybe a werewolf type movie. Not sure. But that is The Snarling. Now, I remember this movie on IMDb had like a three point something. And now it's much higher and there's a lot of good reviews. So it's probably shit. Um, but I don't care. I'm going to check it out anyways. This will be a Monster Monday eventually. And if I rip it apart, I'm sure I'll get shit for it in the comments. And the actors in it will tell me what a little dick I have. Much like they did when I reviewed Bone Hill Road. So, hey, Bone Hill Road. Jacob was right on top of it, man. Right as I said it, that comment popped up on the screen. That's fucking funny. Um, yeah. I get accused of that again, dude. I'm going live and I'm pulling it out right here on air. I don't fucking care. Oh, speaking of which, <laughs> speaking of pulling my dick out, I got a, uh, I got a notification that I got a copyright infringement claim. Freaking on my, uh, on my Fantasy Island review. So what happened was, is somebody was like, hey, you reviewed Fantasy Island a while ago. And I'm looking for it and I can't find it. Like, where is it? So I went to look for it and lo and behold, it was uh, flagged. I didn't even know. I didn't even get the notification. So I look, I look on there and it says it's flagged and that somebody filed a claim against me. So this is like three strikes are out. This is a big one. This isn't like some, like no big deal. Like, you know, we're taking your video down or we're demonetizing it or anything. Like, no, you get three of these and they stand you're gone. Like they delete my channel 
all the videos, all the hours and years I've put into this channel, gone. I was like, are you fucking kidding me? When I saw it, I was furious because you guys know what this is. I mean, this is not much else like different from what I typically do. Um, it's just me standing in front of the camera, you know, sometimes with my dick out, sometimes not. Uh, maybe that's what it was. Maybe they copyrighted my penis. I don't know. I mean, it is fantasy island and my, my penis is a fantasy. I don't understand. I don't know. I did challenge it. So I, I not only challenged it to YouTube, but I, but I contacted the company as well. And I was like, yo, I was like, ah, it's just me standing, you know, sitting in front of a camera talking. Like, what exactly is copyrighted here? Like, I didn't even use like the poster or anything. Like, this is bullshit. Put it back up right fucking now. Um, so yeah, I, I dealt with I, I dealt with that relation. Hey, Armo Canales, awesome, awesome. Um, and uh, that guy, a uh, uh, little little shout out to Armo right there, uh, Canales. That dude has sent me so much cool shit over the years. Thank you so much. I get to tell you kind of like live. It's almost to your face, kind of not, kind of sort of. Um, Thank you so much. Every time you sent me something, it really meant a lot, honestly. It was kick-ass, bro. So take that minute. Anyways, all right. So moving on, talking about girls I want to bang. <laughs> what is it? Um, uh, girls girls I'd like to... No, it's not pork. What is it? Girls I'd like to... In uh, Throw Mama from the Train. When the guy's writing his thing and, and he goes up to read his little report and he's like, girls, I'd like to pork. And he's like, oh, fuck, it's been too long since I see Bork? Is that what it is? Bork? That's what it is. So fucking funny, man. God, I love that movie so much. It's been way too long, man. If you haven't seen Throw Mom from the Train, you are robbing yourself. Dude. That movie is so funny. It's been... It's been way, 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 way too long from that movie. But I quote that movie all the time, even though I probably butcher some of them because it's been too long since I watched it. I think it's seriously one of the funniest movies ever. The guy in the hat killed the other guy in the hat. Ah, so good. Crisscross. I always say that. Crisscross. Crisscross. Anyway, moving on. All right. Now, as I said, speaking of women I'd like to bork, uh, it does have the woman from the Goonies in it. Um... Nine Inch Nails Broken Horror Music Video. I don't know it. Um, but Catherine Isabel, look at this sexy, beautiful woman right here. Catherine Isabel, um, yes. I'm not going to feel her up on camera. That'd get creepy. But Catherine Isabel, Christopher Lloyd. I've seen this movie. I'm 99% sure. <laughs> if you want to see Catherine Isabel in something really cool... Uh, I personally think it's cool. A lot of people think it's like CW garbage, but is the, yeah, she's from Ginger Snaps, is the Netflix original series, The Order, which is like witches versus werewolves. And she's like the head, um, head witch um, of, the, of the place. I, I think that show is super cool. Anyway, um, I have seen this. I swear I have just because of Catherine Isabel. Um, it's like a, I want to say it's like a, uh, is it a revenge movie? A young woman who comes to in a roadside diner. Yeah, this is the one where she like doesn't remember who she was. And she's like a revenge fueled journey. I think if I remember correctly, it kind of reminded me a little bit of like Memento. If Memento was done in a linear narrative. Uh, do I still watch The Walking Dead? You bet your fucking ass I do. I will never give up on that show. I will defend it to all the haters every day. Anyone who gave up on that show because of season eight or because of freaking Glenn's brutal beating or whatever the hell, you are missing out, my friends. Season nine and season 10 are fantastic, okay? I'm gonna defend the show. I'm bummed that it got canceled, you know, that season 11 will be the end. I'm looking forward to the season finale here on October 4th, right? It's 4th, yeah, I think it's 4th. Um, I love it. I love it. I love it. I can't wait for the, you know, this new one. Um, I can't wait for the six extra episodes of season 10. I can't wait for season 11. I can't wait for the Carol, uh, Daryl, Carol, Daryl, 
spinoff show. I can't wait for the Rick movies. I'm looking forward to World Beyond. I'm looking forward to season six of Fear of the Walking Dead. I'm all in, baby. I'm all in. Anyway, so yes, I watch The Walking Dead. I will be there night one for fucking Walking Dead season finale. And I just read something that said um, it was from like, it was from a pretty reputable source. And they were saying like, that this was the this was the best that this season finale was worth it like worth the wait that it was um, typically I don't trust shit like that but I wanted to hype myself up I'm 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 uh, I'm okay with hyping myself up a little bit um, but he said yeah I was like the best episode Walking Dead's done in years so I was like oh shit man I'm I'm excited I'm excited um, but yeah you're excited too that's awesome I'm I'm really looking forward to that uh, my friend Riley who I was talking about earlier. She's watching it through for the first time right now. Um, yes, all good things must come to an end. I know, I know. You don't want it to go too long and really, really start to suck. I have not been watching The Boys Season 2 yet because I have a really hard time with week-to-week -week shows. There's only been a couple shows that I've ever watched week-to-week -week in my life. I just can't do it, man. I have no patience, so I'll wait till it ends. I'm doing that with Lovecraft Country, which I watched the first two episodes of when then I was just like, all right, I got to get the next episode. But then when it goes week to week, man, I just kind of lose sight of it. And I'm like, I can't wait. So fuck it. I'm just going to wait till it all is done. Uh, I do not use pomade. I use Control Freak Serum from Bedhead. Uh, I gel it into place and then I hairspray it with a medium hold hairspray. You guys think I'm a hairdresser? I am. There you go. Anyways. Um, but yeah, Lovecraft Country, I'm waiting for that to end. I'm waiting for, um, what was the other one you just said? Um, oh, The Boys, I'm waiting for that. Um, so, but it's very, very rare. The only shows that I've ever really watched week to week was The Sopranos when it originally came out. Um, Game of Thrones, which I watched every fucking week, you know, till its end. And, um, I want to say I did it with Dexter... And I, and I've done it with The Walking Dead. I've done it with every season of The Walking Dead since episode one. I've been there every week. I can't wait. I'm all about it. I think it's great. So uh, it's very, very rare. Very, very rare. I watch shows week to week. Um, but if there would be shows like Channel Zero, I did every every week because that's my favorite horror show of all time. Um, I fucking love it. I watch American Horror Story week to week um, because of the channel because I review that all the time on here. Uh, six Feet Under, oh man, the greatest series finale ever. I don't know if ser I don't know if Six Feet Under's season finale could be topped. It was just like the perfect send off. Like it was like the writers hit this stride with it, and they just couldn't. They, I, I like I think it's better than Breaking Bad or whatever. Whatever anybody's like, oh, this is the best finale ever. It's Six Feet Under, man. If you like, really watch it. And tell me that's not the greatest ending you've seen in the show. It just is. I mean, I'm not going to like sit here and be like, you can't have a different fucking opinion. I just remember sitting there at the end and I was just blown away. I was like, all these emotions. And I'm not going to tell you how it ends. If you haven't seen it, that would kind of be a spoiler. But man, beautiful, beautiful ending. Anyway, um, so Fargo. You know, Fargo, I've only seen ep uh, season one, which I really enjoyed. You know what I haven't watched, though, now we're speaking of Breaking Bad, is I've never watched uh, Better Call Saul. I've never watched it. And um, I'm currently catching up on Ozark Season 3. I'm Episode 5, and it's fucking fantastic. Um, but guys, you have to understand. Like, if you know anybody who watches more stuff than me, I'd like to meet them. I watch everything. I watch so much. I watch so much more here than I do on the channel. Like, there's so much shit I don't review on the channel that I watch, too. <laughs> and I play video games. I'm constantly doing stuff. Um, but, uh, yeah, I've never, I've never watched uh, uh, Better Call Saul. But uh, Fargo, yeah, I really, really like to watch Fargo. Um, I don't think I watched season two. Season one is the one with Billy Bob Thornton and Martin Freeman. And then season two is which one? Maybe I did watch season two. But I definitely haven't watched the one with Ewan McGregor, which I think is like season four, three or four. Um, 
But yeah, there's so many shows, guys. I seriously would love to watch so much more than I already do. But I don't know how to keep... I legitimately do not know how to uh, get any more shows in, in. Like, with Ozark right now, I'm just like... You know, and I just finished Sense8, which was, which was two seasons. And then I jumped over to Ozark. I have a list. I finally did it. I was like, fuck it. I'm making a list. I'm checking it twice. I put down in order what I'm watching next here, here, here. And I'm following it because I, I like get sidetracked. So there's a bunch of seasons. Like I haven't even watched the series finale, like the, the last season of I zombie, which I loved so much. And I still haven't watched that. Um, but there's so many shows. I mean, supernatural, man. I've only watched like four seasons of that show and I loved it. Um, I just can't keep up with everything as much as I try. Anyway, all right, so next up, we got another magnet release here. Um, I'm not going to lie, this one caught my attention because there's two girls in their underwear on the front cover. I'm a simple man. I'm a simple man. Um, this movie's called Shuttle. And um, you got two, two ladies in their underwear here. It's... Um, it looks like they get on an airport shuttle and then shit goes crazy. Um, has anybody seen this? Oh, I've seen Penny Dreadful. You bet your ass. All three seasons, man. It's great stuff. Love it. I have not watched Penny Dreadful City of Angels, though, but I'd like it. Um, but yeah, magnet release. Uh, some hot chicks on the front. This chick even kind of looks like Samara Weaving. So, um, But yeah. Has anybody watched Penny Dreadful... Um, City of Angels, that's what that one's called, right? The new one. Um, who's who's the lead of that? Um, it's Natalie Dormer. Oh, Natalie Dormer. Oh, Natalie Dormer. So, so hot. Jesus. <laughs> I mean, you had Eva Green in the first show. Who's, she's fantastic. She's fantastic. Um, anyways, all right. We're, we're running out of stuff here. Now, these last two were the ones that I was so shocked to see. So shocked to see. Yeah, that's it's right. Um, oh, New Penny Dreadful is awful. Hmm. That's, uh, that's a bummer. I'm not saying, you know, I'll check it out eventually, get my own assessment of it. Now, I have a feeling that I'm going to get a phone call any minute now that's going to break up this live. I'll, I'll exit out of it. I don't know how to turn it because I can't put it on airplane mode and be live, I don't think. But I have a feeling I'm going to get a phone call any minute. So, um, just to let you guys know, in case I get cut off, I don't know what's going to happen if I get a phone call right now. But uh, it, is my, it is my father and his wife's 18th wedding anniversary. And when they were walking out the door tonight, I was like, you know what? I'm kind of a shit son. I don't do enough for my, I don't do enough for my dad. He's done so much for me. Like, what the fuck? Why don't I ever do anything for him? Like, I'll do stuff. I'm not, I don't do, do any. I'm not I'm really a shitty son. But I was like, you know, I, mean, I haven't done anything cool for them in so long. So, like, right before he left, I slyly, like, asked him, like, hey, where are you guys going? And he told me. So I called him up right as they, right as they left. And I, I, I got ahead of, their, ahead of them. And I was like, hey. I'm like, here's my card number. Um, dinner's on me tonight. So I, I have a feeling I'll be getting a phone call any minute. I'm, like, a little nervous, though, that they might go a little hog wild. Let's get, um, let's get a bit of a bottle of that crystal. <laughs> let's throw that on there. Um, so I might, I might have a heart attack. What I see, it'll like, while I'm recording right now, it'll be like, bank error, insufficient funds. <laughs> You're fucking broke. My dad put everything. He's like, give me one of everything. Tonight I'm going fucking hog wild. Anyway. All right. Um, so that might happen. Anyway. Um, now this one blew my mind. So currently I'm playing Apex Legends. As you guys all know, I talk about it every live stream I do. And my brother always interrupts us so that I can go play with him. Um, and, uh, this is actually set in the same universe. And this is a game I've always been interested in playing. And that is Titanfall 2 on the Xbox one. Yes, this is was at the Dollar Tree. Titanfall 2 was at the fucking Dollar Tree. That's crazy to me. So I was like, okay, I'm picking this up. You know, maybe my brother can go grab a copy and we'll, we'll, we'll go online with it. But unbelievable, unbelievable. Um, 
But uh, what, what was this comment over here? Um, hey, Source. Um, I thought I saw something, a question. Oh, there's a bunch of questions, but I, I don't know. Anyway, so yeah, Titanfall for the Xbox One. That blew my mind. But you want to know what blew my mind even more? And unfortunately, we have reached the end. This is the last thing I bought. As I said, I put like 25 things back. Um, but this one was the craziest find for me by far. So this is not a show I have watched yet, but I've been really looking forward to checking this show out. In fact, it is on my list to watch. Um, but I got the entire season on Blu-ray, mind you, which fucking blew my mind. The TV series starring Tom Hardy himself, Taboo. The complete first season of Taboo on Blu-ray in a slipcase for a dollar at the Dollar Tree. I just, <laughs> I don't even know. When I saw this, I was like, is this, like, did someone sneak this in here and accidentally leave it? <laughs> I just couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe this was in there. That blew my mind, man. I've not seen a, a season of something. And I sure as shit haven't seen, like, a really, like, almost everyone I've talked to who's seen this loved it. They said it's super violent and whatever. Uh, it stars freaking Tom Hardy. And now this is really surprising to me though, because this was like a show on TNT, if I remember correctly. And for some reason, this was put, in, put out by Echo Bridge. Can you believe Echo Bridge put out Taboo on Blu-ray? FX, okay, thank you, yeah, FX. FX let Echo Bridge, Echo fucking Bridge, man. The guys who put like eight movies on one disc and sell it for 13 pesos. Echo fucking bridge. Uh, that's crazy to me. So I don't know what the quality will be of it, like the transfer, but I've talked to a few of my friends who have watched this and they love it. Um, so really excited about this. I will watch this soon enough. I will get to you guys. Um, I watched a movie... Two, two nights ago, I still haven't reviewed it yet, uh, been hanging out with my kids, been doing a bunch of shit. We, diked, we hiked up to uh, Devil's Bridge today. Look that up, it's pretty cool. Um, so I've just been a little busy, but uh, I watched a movie called Vast, The Vast of Night, or Vast, Vast of the Night, or it's an Amazon original. It's a drama mystery. It plays out like a Twilight Zone episode. Um, it's from this year and I thought it was great. I thought it was so great. And I, Vast of Night, is that what it's called? Just Vast of Night? Um, oh man, I thought it was great. Um, there's been a few movies that have come out in the last, um, maybe five years that have felt like Twilight Zone episodes. Like really have, and this one very much plays on it. Like it opens up and it pretends that it's basically a Twilight Zone episode, which I thought was really cool. But there's been a few other movies. There was the Laplace's Demon and there was um, the, the Similars. The Similars, the Laplace Demons, and now The Vast of Night. Like these are cool. These are movies that I was like, wow, these genuinely have this full on Rod Sterling-esque Twilight Zone feel to these things. It felt like a modern day, like, like he kind of came back from the grave and wrote and directed these. Um, so, yeah, um, Vast of Night is definitely on Amazon because it's an Amazon original. Um, Laplace is Demon, you're going to have to rent that one. I don't think that's available anyway. Do I like The Void? Of course I like The Void, man. Yeah, The Void's great. Uh, gets better every time I watch it. I found about the Laplace's Demon from your channel, saw it, and thought it was fantastic. Thank you. Um, the Void was directed by, um, what's his fucking name? The dude that came from Astron 6. Um, Steve, oh God. He ended up directing the new Leprechaun movie, uh, which is really, really fun. Um, if you haven't seen the new Leprechaun, it's, it's, for me, it's easily the best Leprechaun movie. I know that's not a super high bar, but, uh, I, I really liked it. Any new found footage, any new found footage that's any good, 
Um, hmm. That's a good question. Um, I know one that everyone overlooked like a year or two ago was The Devil's Doorway. Um, that's a really cool one. It's like set in the 1960s. Steven Kostanska, or Kostanska, Kostansky. I never know how to say his name. Thank you. Um, but what was I talking about? <laughs> I totally lost sight of what the fuck I was saying there. Somebody said that across the screen. Oh, found footage. Yeah, yeah. Devil's Doorway. Um, cool movie. Real cool movie. Um, yes, underrated is an overrated word. You have just won my heart, my friend. You have just won my heart. VHS movies were okay. The second one's pretty rad, man. The first one is okay. The, sec the third one is, is pretty terrible. Just ordered shivers. Thanks for the heads up. Hey, man, no problem. And little monsters. Cool. I got some serious deals. I should have brought the deals onto the channel uh, for this. I, I should have done that. I, I bought seven movies recently for super cheap. I got, let's see, real quick. Uh, let's see if I can remember all of them. I got, I like The Devil's Pass too. Totally, Molly, 100%. Um, I got um, the Rob Zombie Firefly Trilogy on Blu-ray. So obviously, House of a Thousand Corpses, Devil's Rejects, Three from Hell, Three from Hell I'm not a fan of, whatever, I don't care. They had all three on Blu-ray, brand new, at Walmart, for 13 bucks, 12.96 or whatever. I couldn't believe that. <laughs> I was like, holy shit, because at Target, they have like the steel book and it's 30. And then I was like, uh, I don't know if I wanna go get that. The whaling is fantastic. Um, but I was like, I don't know. And then I walked from Walmart and I saw it for 13 bucks and I was like, yoink. I mean, that's freaking good just for the house and, and Devil's Rejects Blu-rays. I'm all about it. I will say though, when I opened it up, uh, I have seen Pontypool. That's a weird movie, man. I don't know. I'd have to rewatch it, but that's a very unique idea. I'll give it that, if anything. I have not seen Cannibal Ferox. I know the film, though. It's the wannabe Cannibal Holocaust. Um, but inside the, uh, the Rob Zombie three-disc thing, um, I was actually, like, pretty underwhelmed by the, like, the cover art and stuff in there. It looked like it was, like, burned discs. I was really like, what the fuck? Why does this look so poor? Like, so, I don't know. Maybe that's why I got it for 13 bucks. But Walmart has all three for 13 bucks. Um, they also have Shivers. Uh, David Cronenberg Shivers. And Little Monsters. The Vestron releases for 12... 12, like, 96 or so. Or, like, 12.88 or something. Like, under 13 bucks. Bone Tomahawk's awesome, man. I actually just had a friend watch Bone Tomahawk. And she told me it was way too small, uh, too slow. And I was like, all right, whatever. Any plans to review Smiley? I did review Smiley for a, uh, for a Slasher Sunday. So there you go. You can go check it out right now. That's how good I am, guys. I, I, I do preemptive reviews. Um, but yeah, you can get Shivers and Little Monsters. Vestron releases. Vestron releases are typically $27 a piece. And for some reason, these fucking are only like 12 bucks. I do not understand why. But there you go. Pick them up. Such a good price. Such a good price. Um, what else did I get? I also got Cobra. Okay. So, fo so um, I've been looking for the Scream Factory um, Blu-ray release of Cobra. Because Cobra's gotten two Blu-ray releases right now. And uh, Scream Factory put one out. But it's out of print now. Um, and I was really, really looking forward to it. Um, and, and, and I couldn't find it. And then I went into Walmart and they had it. So Cobra, yes, Cobra. Come on, guys, the fucking Stallone movie. You're goddamn right, the Stallone movie. Keggy, yes, love that movie, man. That's straight up a slasher movie. Like, I don't care what anybody says. Much like freaking uh, The Terminator and that, and then even like Silent Rage with Chuck Norris. There you go. There's some action slashers. Slaction. Slaction? Actors, <laughs> Predator. Predator's a monster movie, but it is kind of set up like a slasher movie. I will agree with you. Um, so I could, I could see, I could see an argument for Predator being kind of a slasher for sure. Um, dragged across the concrete. Yeah, I, I love all of S. Craig Zoller's films: uh, Bone Tomahawk, Brawl in Cell Block '99, and uh, Dragged Across Concrete. The guy even wrote the newest Puppet Master, Puppet Master: um, The Littlest Reich. 
freaking S. Craig Zoller wrote that movie. And it's, gr it's great. It's great. I love it. So uh, I will definitely be looking forward to anything that that guy uh, does in the future. So awesome for him. He's, he's like, he's like as close as we get to a Quentin Tarantino. I feel like he's very, he's very not, is he like, he's his own style, but it just feels like the closest thing I've had to Quentin Tarantino is this guy. So I, I just dig the shit out of his films and I can't wait to see what he does next. Um, and mu much like a, um, like a Tyler Sheridan, uh, T Taylor Sheridan. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The guy who did like hell or high water and freaking. Um, you know, Sicario and uh, Sicario de Soledad or however you're supposed to say that and um, freaking Wind River and uh, that dude, that dude rules. I can't wait for that guy. Uh, oh, the Chicken Life Force is a 10, bro. A hundred percent. I was just talking about that today with Gabby uh, on her, on her, um, have I seen Delicatessen? I have seen Delicatessen. That's the Jean-Pierre Junot film. The guy who directed Amelie and Alien Resurrection. Uh, that was like one of his, I think it was like his, not his first movie. Because didn't he do um, like The City of Lost Children as well? Um, uh, I, God, I barely remember it. But yeah, there you go. Am I a fan of Nicholas Winding Refn? You bet your fucking ass. I think Drive is a masterpiece. I absolutely adore... Um, freaking uh neon demon um and then bronson of course is fantastic um i honestly have never seen valhalla rising and i have not seen the pusher trilogy so um i would like to watch those and then i haven't watched his uh his tv show um too too old to die young or too young to die yeah too young to die older however which way that goes um, I haven't watched it, but they're all feature length fucking episodes. Each episode's like an hour and a half long and there's like 10 episodes. Um, my buddy King Gross uh, is a big fan of his and watched them all and he thought it was really good. So um, there you go. Uh, wait, I saw something. Deo Soledado sucks. Come on, man. No way. Crazy. Um, do I collect vinegar, vinegar syndrome? I do have some vinegar syndrome. I mean, I don't collect them, but if like vinegar syndrome releases something rad, like blood hook, I'm immediately picking it up like crazy. I want to say who's the one that just recently announced it wasn't vinegar. I don't think, um, a, a very exciting announcement for me was they just announced that they were putting out Patrick still lives the Italian sequel to Patrick, um, on the uncut, version of it on blu-ray i pre-ordered that shit boom man so fucking fast i love that movie that has some of the craziest kills i've ever seen you get to see a girl has like a, a like a pipe or something shoved up her vagina and is like moved around and fucking and you see blood just pouring out of her vagina it's insanity um what's seven is blood hook seven I have some Vinegar Syndrome movies. I'm just trying to think of uh, what titles I have from Vinegar Syndrome. Um, is Severn, is that uh, Bloodhook Severn? Hmm. I thought it was, I thought it was Vinegar Syndrome. Oh well. Uh, I do have some. You should do a trip. So I just uh, posted a video of me curling, or not a video, a picture of my, me uh, curling my daughter's hair at the salon. Because everyone like never believes I'm a hairdresser. And I'm like, I'll rock some fucking hair out for you guys. Um, Bruiser. Are we seriously talking about the freaking George A. Romero Bruiser movie? Oh, Jesus Christ. I hope not. That movie's terrible. Um, jumped in at a good time. Pull in the whole kill key. Uh, yes. See? That guy knows what's up, what I'm talking about, dude. Patrick still lives. is rad. So go pre-order that shit right now. It's on... Um, What's it on? It's on, it's not, it's not on Diablique. I think it might be something like that or uh, some, but whatever. Anyways, um, I'm going to wrap things up here pretty quick, guys. But uh, what's your favorite Masters of Horror episode? Family. Family is my favorite Masters of Horror episode um, with George Went, right? That's who's in it, George Went, if memory serves. And then Cigarette Burns. Would maybe be a second and Jennifer 
uh, would definitely that probably be my top three. I would like to review the whole series again. Um, I really enjoyed some. I really didn't like some. Um, the one in um, what is it like? Uh, oh, what's that one? Fucking not incident on a mountain road. The deer, the deer woman one. What's that one called? Deer, deer woman, deer something. Dude, there's a scene in that movie that fucking murdered me. I was laughing so hard at it. It was something that happens inside of, of a big rig. And I, I can't even remember um, what it was. Can we get a recap of the movies that you have from uh, Dollar Tree? Uh, yeah, the video will be uploaded. You can watch it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you can kind of peek through these. Um, so, yeah, this would not have been a very fun live stream had I just put these all up like this and been like, all right, guys, have a good night. And then I saw the devil, probably the, uh, probably the best movie in here for sure. Now this is the best movie in here, but I saw the devil guys and telling you, you can't go wrong. Anybody who says this is not a good movie is an asshole. Um, but yeah, didn't somebody else say something? My freaking phone is dying now. This is so stupid. Deer Woman. Okay, it is just called Deer Woman. Um, Cemetery Man is fun for sure. Um, I pretty much love all the Romero films. Martin. Ooh, yeah, Martin's good. Martin's a good one. Martin's definitely overlooked for sure. Z's. I'm down for a total recall and they live 4K. Um... I think we're good guys so thank you everyone who joined me tonight wait barbara crampton or jamie lee curtis Pfft, barbara crampton no doubt about it barbara crampton is still fuckable right now barbara crampton has aged so well she is so good looking um wow i'm, I'm really really surprised that bob she works that bob man she's she's definitely attractive um the man from nowhere is a very good movie um, I mean, Monkey Shines and Dark Half were both flawed. It's been a long time since I've seen Monkey Shines or the Dark Half. Um, you know, honestly, I wasn't ever really into Jamie Lee Curtis. Honestly, like, I'm not going to say she's bad looking. She's not bad looking. Um, I found her attractive in a few movies. I mean, like, I think the hottest she ever was was True Lies. Um, Harry Tasker's wife. I'm not sure if I remember her name in that or not, but uh, I thought that was like the sexiest she's ever looked. Of course, that like dance scene that she does in the hotel and he drops the freaking thing. Um, I thought she was just so, Helen, that's right, thank you. Oh, dude. Seriously, some of the funniest lines ever are in that movie. Some of the funniest lines in the, in the history of film to me is in that movie. Bill Paxton is out fucking rageous in that movie. Ask like a 10-year-old boy that line right there. I don't know if you get away with that line today in a movie. And then the freaking Tom Arnold commentary on his ex-wife leaving him. I have said the Ice Cube Trays line so many times. <laughs> what kind of a sick bitch takes the Ice Cube Trays out of the freezer? Dude, oh my God. Everything Bill Paxton says in that movie is gold. Pure comedic gold. Now, that's seriously James Cameron's, like, definitely his most underappreciated movie. Anytime you hear James Cameron, it's always Aliens. It's always Terminator, Terminator 2, Titanic, Avatar, even Abyss. I never hear anybody mention True Lies. Why is True Lies never the movie anybody mentions? It's crazy to me. True Lies does not have a Blu-ray release. You know, I just looked into that pretty recently. Like I was looking through my, my, my movies and I saw True Lies in there and I was like, I have the DVD. Why don't I have a Blu-ray of this movie's fucking rules? And I went and I looked, there isn't a Blu-ray, you're right. What is up with that? Come on, Cameron. Like, what the fuck? Anyway, <laughs> it's such a good movie. It's such a good movie. Um, I don't, yeah, maybe people don't realize it, but True Lies, yeah, it deserved a sequel. I, I don't, I wouldn't want to see Tasker. <laughs> Now, Lost Highway, oh my God, when I finished The Lost Highway. Now, granted, I was like 15 or something when I saw that. I want to say Lost Highway came out, what, 97? And I want to say I saw it shortly thereafter. So I was probably 16. 
so 50, I was 15 in 97, so it would have been like 16, 17 when I saw it. <laughs> I thought it was the most pretentious shit I ever seen in my life at that time. Maybe outside of a racer head. Like, when my, my young self couldn't handle David Lynch. I couldn't. I was just like, I don't know what the fuck is going on in these movies. I think this is so stupid. Like, shit was happening. Like, Lost Highway, I was never so lost in my life. <laughs> that was a lot of the movie. And I was like, wait, this guy's in prison now? What's happening? I don't know. Thoughts on Bad Lieutenant? I remember it barely, but I can remember the best and worst performances I've ever seen in my entire life at the exact same time, and that is Nicolas Cage in Bad Lieutenant, Port of Call, New Orleans. You want to see a performance that you're like, Am I watching like a work of genius or am I watching an absolute psychopath completely destroy what career he has left, which is not much <laughs> at this point. But that is Cage at his most cagiest. If you want to see an insane performance for Nicolas Cage, and trust me, he's done a lot of crazy ones. This is like, to me, his craziest performance. This is such a wild fucking movie. It's got Val Kilmer in it. It was directed by Werner Herzog. It's like a, a sequel to, and it's not even like connected pretty much in any way to the Harvey Keitel one. Um, it's such a bizarre movie. It's so cool. There's like a scene where it's just like a close up on a freaking lizard or something for like, or like an iguana for like 10 minutes. <laughs> it's like, as like he talks and then there's like somebody's soul is dancing in the background and Nick Cage is like cracked out and fucking some dude's girlfriend in front of him. It's so good. It's so good. Vampire kiss? Oh, I'm a vampire. I'm a vampire. His performance in that is incredible. The shitty, like his performance in that fucking, uh, his therapist, the shit. Oh my God. I don't know what accent he's trying to pull off in that movie. I don't know what it is. I don't know what planet he's supposed to be from. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what the hell he's doing in that, but it's hilarious, dude. Nick Cage is gold, man. It sucks that he's made so many shitty films now but you remember the days of nick cage just being so fun he was in all these kick-ass super cool movies like fucking raising arizona and even stupid stuff like freaking con air or um like any of the michael bay stuff like the um you know the rock with freaking sean connery and everything that movie's so fucking fun man it's so fun eight millimeter you got any snuff you got any harder <laughs> You got any hard? You got anything harder? You got any snuff? No, man, snuff's a myth. That's freaking uh, Joaquin Phoenix. Holy shit! And James Gandolfini before, before freaking, uh, before James Gandolfini was anybody. That was back when he was doing like True Romance and stuff. But uh, I was playing with the Con Air being stupid. It's a silly movie. I'll call it stupid all I want. Fuck you. <laughs> Snake Eyes. It's been a long time. You want to see it? You want to talk about the dumbest plot of all time? You want to talk about Face Off? What in the fuck is going on with the plot of that movie? So if you take my face off of my head and you put it on to somebody's face, it does not look like John Travolta and fucking Nicolas Cage, okay? Leatherface has proved this. Hasn't anybody watched the Texas Chainsaw Massacre? You want to talk about one of the creepiest scenes in history was fucking the scene in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake where Jessica Biel turns around and he's wearing her boyfriend's face and you can like, like you can tell it's her boyfriend's face, but then it like takes you a second. Like you're like, there's something off about this. And it's like, it's Leatherface wearing his face. That's the creepiest face wear in any movie I've ever watched. It is eerie. Could you imagine, dude, you would never sleep again. You would never sleep again if you looked over and your, your loved one, your, your, you know, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, whoever was fucking, he was like some dude was wearing his face and it looked just like him that shit fucked me up when I saw it uh, back in 2003. Um, but yes, the muscles wouldn't match. The bone structure wouldn't match. Nothing would match. Um, but yeah, the one I double say, uh, would I smash if I wore Brad Pitt's face? Um, I mean, you could rape, I suppose. I mean, they don't really have a choice in the matter, but I don't think they're going to bang you willingly with Brad Pitt's face on you, but you can try. I mean, Good luck getting at him. Um, but anyway, guys, all right, I'm wrapping it up. So thank you to everyone who joined me. Um, favorite Edward Norton movie, uh, Fight Club. 
I know that's a shitty answer, or that's like an obvious answer, but I don't care. Um, 